Two teams in the XFL in our nation's capital. The DC Defenders fans have seen an undefeated start through the midway mark of the year. Houston's the only one lost team that's left. Each leads their respective divisions as they get ready for this week six battle. And we welcome you to Audi Field. I'm Taylor Zarzer. You'll see the rest of our crew in just a moment. While these two teams are the best, they've done it in a different way. The DC defenders love to run the football while Houston is prolific through the air. In fact, Houston will get the football first tonight. And for more on their great offense, let's go down to Tom Luganville. Thank you, Taylor. In the Houston locker room with offensive coordinator AJ Smith. And Coach Smith, you're the only offensive coordinator in this league that has successfully attempted and executed the double forward pass unique to the XFL. So walk us through how you ended up coming up with this play. This obviously the base play that it started with. Right, so you talk about a staple play in our offense, right? Here's just a shallow cross made famous by one of my mentors and good friends, Hal Mummy. And what we did was the game before, we decided we were gonna screen for the shallow. So this guy came here, this guy came here, this guy came here. And then it was about three years ago, we realized when we ran this, that if we had the right style of athlete, he could take this and then boom, throw it. So, you know, we set it up the game before versus San Antonio. We ran it first play and we knew the coaches would overcoach it. And then we set them up again for the pass. Now this, your X rate here has been John Trey Kirkland, number 13. You no longer have his services. So you have to come up now with somebody else that you think can make this type of throw. So my question for you is this. You created this. Do you got something else up in, in your bag of tricks? We always have something up our sleeve. It may not look exactly like this, but you can count on us to do something innovative. Uh, maybe a little razzle-dazzle here on Monday night. Harry, over to you in the D.C. locker room. I'm standing here with the offensive coordinator for the D.C. defenders, Fred Kais. And, Coach, I got to be honest with you. The two-quarterback system has been very, very well to your team. Uh, both the guys have been dynamic in doing so. Why has it been able to work so well for your football team? You know, they're both very good athletes. They both got a lot of FBI. They're very smart individuals, uh, football intelligent wise. Uh, they just complement one another very well. You know, they, they, they feed off one another in the film room and the practice. And, you know, it's just a good system. Well, let's have some fun, Coach. Go ahead and draw up a QB run for us and take us, to the, take us through the rules of everything and how everything is read. This is one of our basic formations. You know, we're spreading them out two by two. Uh, uh, most of our plays, as you know, we're reading the end, we're reading the linebacker, we're reading safety. Somebody's getting read. We typically have a pass connected to it. Uh, this one here is one of our outside, and we're going to run an outside zone play here. Uh, and what we're doing is we're reading... The, the nose or the two eye or whatever it is. So our typical outside zone, you know, we're, we're running outside zone right here. We're locking on the backside. The difference is now this right guard, instead of running the outside zone, he's stepping away and he's going to get in the backer. And of course, if that nose takes a couple of steps, there goes the quarterback. If not, then we're handing it off and we still got what we want on the outside. You know, and then we'll put different pass plays with it and different, you know, scenarios, depending on what the defense wants to give us. Well, thanks, Coach. Looking forward to seeing this QB run game tonight. I'll toss it over to Stormy Bonantoni for more on the bet. Yeah, Harry, and it seems like a lot of people have been placing their bets pre-kickoff over the last hour because all week long, D.C. was a two-and-a-half point favorite. They closed two, and the total was sitting at 42 throughout the course of the week and just recently changed to 43. So money coming in on Houston and the over. A little bit surprising in terms of the side, considering D.C. is the lone team in the league not only straight up winning every single game, but against the number as well. They're covering spreads by just over eight points per game. I do understand the love for the over, though. These are the two highest scoring teams in the XFL, Taylor. Hey, look at that San Diego State Aztec smile <laughs> on Stormy's face now that her team is in the final four. You see how unique the kickoff is. You have to be separated by five yards, and you can't move until the ball is caught here. Gets past the 20, and it's picked up at the goal line by Dejon Lee. And he's tackled deep in his own territory inside the 15-yard line. Nice play by Malik Fisher. Here comes Brandon Silvers. This guy has been dinking and dunking the football all over the field, and then he takes a shot. And then he does take a shot. You're right. But can they get go. some of those shots to connect tonight? 
Here we go, white check on one, ready? So we're gonna be a check with me here as we start off in the opening stanza here in Washington, D.C. Go! Hi, hi. To the air on the first play and across the middle, wide open Travell Harris, and it's a first down up near the 29. It's a pickup of 14. Here we go, here we go. Trips right, Bronco stare. Hold on, ready? Threw it 47 times last week, Luke's, and he found his favorite target, Harris, go. on the first play. Hot, hot. It's Borgie here, and in the backfield, he is met for a hey, loss. Hey. It's Francis Bernard. Harry Douglas left, calls that out, man the QB Borgie. of the defense. Yeah, I tell you, man, he is really good. Nobody blocks him in the A gap there between the center and the guard. Does a nice job breaking down, tackling Max Borgie. But he brings the energy to this defensive football team. And here comes Cole McDonald into the game on second and 13. Silvers to the bench. And he gives it to Borgie at the last to Borgie at the last second. Up near the original line of scrimmage. The cool Give cat me, AJ uh, Smith. Trips right, trips right, or trips left, red knife. Trips left, red knife. Get him set so we can look at it. Get him out, get him out. Do the shades stay on after sunset? More than likely, that's a pretty bright light right, right across from us. Right, right. <laughs> Third and long for Houston. Silvers with a crosser, it's Justin Smith. Easy pitch and catch past the 45 yard line. You hear him say trips right purple. That's a freeze count. So they're going to get to the line of scrimmage. May have a little hard count here. Then they're just going to freeze and hold their water and then step back. Detroit, Detroit, Detroit. Now you hear the call. Detroit, Detroit, Go. Hard, hard. Borgie. Tackled around the edge. Doesn't get much. It was Michael Joseph, Mr. Interception Man. Right. Blazer. And let's go uh, Broncos stare. John Trey right. Kirkland. Broncos same stare. Blazer. Out hey, for Wade Bronco, Phillips tonight, same Luke. Stare. I want ready. That's a lot of production you've got to replace. Look for number 10, Justin Smith. Number 80, Ben Putman, to be two guys that might take up oh. some of that slack. Hot, hot. Now Smith in the game. This time is thrown behind Cedric Bird. It'll be third down. That's it. Here, Brandon Silver's right trips there. Trips right. Trips right. Let's go red. Stack Uno. Stack Asian. But wait. Wait till the line goes. Red. Red. Send the line. Red tech going. Ready. So he's telling wait, Cedric Bird, you got to settle down in the open area. Don't run and get covered. Sit down and let's connect. Silvers has plenty of time. Deep ball one on one. And it's caught but out of bounds by Burnett. Mark the stack back. Good try. Good throw. Way to see him go vertical and go. Seth's got a throttle on that hole. Saw the underneath throws loose throughout the drive. Silvers tried the deep shot. Led Burnett out of bounds, and it's punting time. This was the biggest difference between the 4 0 yeah, start and the one loss. Yeah, for Houston, okay. was no explosive plays last week. And two. Hunt's blocked yep. last week in the game. Hunter Duplessis had a rough game. Race Porter hunting this one. And it's caught at the 15-yard line by Jacquez Ezard. And he is tackled there. And it'll be DC's turn on offense. 37-yard punt, no return. A double-headed monster of Jordan Tiamu and De'Eric King. Set it Texas right bunch, 22 dual, all ready. Tamu leads all XFL quarterbacks with over 200 yards rushing hey, yep. so far this season. It's ground and pound with DC on offense. And with the running clock and some of the rules in the XFL, it really benefits you if you can maintain possession of the ball here we go, here we go. and limit Houston's offensive possessions. Ready, ready. Set, go. Throws on the first play at the line of scrimmage throw up to the 20-yard line to Josh Hammond. Spread right, spread right, spread left wide. It's a pickup of six. Roger, Roger, Roger. Let's go, let's go. 
Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Take him. Tom is the best quarterback that runs. This is the best runner, period, in the XFL. Abram Smith trying to move the pile. Lukes, how about the game he had last week for over 200 yards rushing? Yeah, and they were down a running back. 12, 12. So they really had to lean on Abram Smith a week ago on the road, and he came through big time. So they lean on him on the third and two. Hey, play, 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 play. Hey, you got to get up. You got to get up. 12 personnel here, here one go, back, here two tight ends. Ready, ready. Set, go. Think to Smith over the top, it's deflected. It's incomplete and it's fourth down. That was Tavante Beckett that got his hand on it, forcing a DC punt. You, you heard Harry uh, Douglas in the open talking with Fred Kais, the offensive coordinator. You saw the backfield action, and then you got little wrinkles that come off of it. Well, that's one of them, the slant behind the backfield action. Able to connect a week ago against St. Louis, not so successful on that first drive. A cannon by Daniel Whalen. And it's fielded at the 15-yard line by William Likely. And Likely's got daylight as Whalen outkicked his coverage. And Likely's back to the 34-yard line. It is a beautiful night in our nation's capital for the best two teams in the XFL. No score in the first. Welcome to Stormy Heights, where the windows are always all on the longest play in the XFL this year. So you're going to check it. Now you're going to go 28. You see formation down here, heavy down into the boundary. They're going to run it right there. Second and seven from the 30. Back to Smith. That hole opens up. Makes a man look silly. Abram Smith. How about it? Another huge run, and he's in the end zone. My guy John Schrifferin with the call there last week. And to be clear, that's the longest run in XFL history. Ever. 70 yards. 70 yards. I think we're going to see a lot more of those. 218, those yards. Four, that's more yards than 49 other players who've touched the football in the XFL. Reed Silvers. And he is crushed. Cedric Bird is met immediately by Anthula Kelly. Welcome to Washington, D.C. Just a pick up of one. Hey, Trent's left. Trust left, dog, F option. Blue, on one, ready? Trust left. Dog. Blue, blue. Well, option routes Go. you're going to see by the inside receivers All here. Right. Silvers goes inside, and he finds Bird. Look at the cut he makes into D.C. territory. First down, Houston. A little option route, just run up. Cedric Bird just sits in the void. Uh, Brandon Silvers gets the ball out. Automatic front, 53 weak. See the void, don't run to get covered, just settle right in there. So difficult to rush the quarterback, Brandon Raise Silvers hand, for Houston, me? because he gets the ball out of his hand so quickly. Greg Williams asking for some communication with his defense. Go! Hot, hot. Oh. Swing it out to Harris again. He slips. It rained quite a bit in Washington, D.C. today. Some more from the defensive coordinator. Joker, here we go. Joker, here we go. Sizzle. Charlotte, sizzle, two lurk. Charlotte, Charlotte, sizzle, two lurk. Charlotte, sizzle, two lurk. Widow check alert. Widow check alert. We live, in, we live in Charlotte, so we know what that means. Widow, 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 widow. Get the three-man front. Get the three-man front. So they're going to shift down to a three-man front. This is Go. their check. Uh -huh. Silvers underneath. It's open to Bird again. Diamond. Third and short. You can't tell. There's a lot going on defensively. A lot of terminology, a lot of verbiage, a lot of post-snap movement. Queens the back, single press. From D.C. Queens the back, single press. Queens, Eagle, Queens the back, single, not, not Eagle, not Eagle, just Eagle, Queens. No, not Eagle, just Queens the back. Cole McDonald in at the quarterback position now. You see press, one. So that's one high safety press across the board 
as you're seeing right now from DC. McDonald gives to Borgie, breaks tackles, first down, Houston inside the DC 30. Ball, 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 ball. So when you play with Cole McDonald at quarterback, you force DC to have to respect quarterback run. Not the same with Brandon Silvers. So even though there was a loaded box there for DC, they got to be very careful that quarterback doesn't pull the ball. Fake to Borgie with McDonald still in there on a first down, and it's almost picked off. Michael Joseph missed an interception, almost had his fifth of the year. Cole McDonald's got an open target right here, and Justin Smith, number 10, as you see right there, he just overthrows him. He's under duress, rolling to his left as a right-handed quarterback, but he wishes he could have that one to do over. Yeah. Silver's Go. back in. And that's a bullet to Burnett. Good shit, Terry! That dinking and dunking sure is working, Luke. Trips right, eagle protect. Trips right, eagle protect. Here we go. Here we go. Good shit, Tay. Hey, put this fucking in the end. I think it's working. I think it's working eagle too, because Houston is going at a fast pace and they're not allowing DC's post snap movement go. to be a problem. Uh -huh. Oh, it's a direct snap. This to Bryson Alleen, oh, and he's inside face the man. ten. There it is, good. Okay, give me this, give me this. Go up. There is a flag down on the field. Nice little wrinkle. You see Bryson Alleen, he's so undersized, he gets lost behind the line of scrimmage. Let's see if Reggie Smith saw what Silver saw. All right, so we're going to go half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Auto first. Personal, Personal foul. foul. Face mask. Defense number 90. Penalized half the distance to the goal. An automatic first down. Give me regular, 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 regular. regular. Strong right, Denver punch. Strong there we go. Right, Denver punch. There we go. Hey, strong right, Denver punch. Owen, ready? Let's go. First and goal from the four. Borgie, room to room, touchdown, Houston. The team that leads the XFL in scoring touchdowns, passing touchdowns, and explosive plays runs it into the end zone. Going to go left hash here. Let's see what they decide to go with. They just bring the H back, back across the line of scrimmage, secure the back side, and then it's Borgie doing the rest, pushing the pile. He's trying us behind a strong effort from Houston's offensive line. Hey, Black, why follow Owen? Ready? You see all of the options that you have for extra points. You can't kick it. You need to go from one, from the two, two from the five, or three from the ten. Most teams elect to do this, go for two from the five. Go. Uh, oh, Dave for Silvers into a muddy defensive oh. secondary, and it's caught by Bird. Eight nothing, uh, hey, Houston. Max Borgie back in the lineup, was injured two weeks ago, played last week at Seattle. He's the feature back, the perfect back for this offense. An eight no start for Houston. Mom, please. Girls, pet. How'd that play come together? That was all the whole line. I mean, I just, I ran five yards. That wasn't anything. But I mean, as an offense, we talked about it all week. We got to get points. And we got to start fast. So it's a good start. We, but uh, we got a lot of ball left. So we got to keep rolling. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. Stormy, that guy has seen the U.S. in the <laughs> last year. He was in Pullman, Washington. Yep. Indianapolis, Denver, Pittsburgh, and now he's in Washington, D.C., all trying to make it as a professional football player. Yeah, great player in the air raid under the late great Mike Leach, Washington State. So familiar with the scheme now under A.J. Smith, the offensive coordinator for the Roughnecks. Ezard from the 10, straight ahead, and he gets past the 30 
And that's where DC will start. How do they get their ground game going here, Luke's? Well, you know, they didn't incorporate quarterback run, which has been such a staple of their run game in that opening series. They got to stay ahead of the chains. Spread right, Alaska, Alaska, ready. This isn't a team that's going to want to throw the football over the lot to move to move the chains. They have to rely on success on early downs so they get an advantageous third and line to gains. Third and two, third and three. That's where they want to live. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. Go. Easy, easy. Hey, 28. 29, 29. Under, under. 29, 29, 29. Here we go, here we go. We're going to go right 29. here. Run ready. Set, go. Smith follows that left tackle, gets out of bounds, and we could have a late hit. Yes, we do. Open up the 0-2-0. After him, but I don't know if he made contact, but based on it. Let's go with it. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense, number 52. 15 yard penalty added to the dead ball right, spot. Automatic first down. You know, that's Emmanuel Ellerby, and those are the things that have not been a problematic for Houston or D.C. It's one of the reasons why they're the two most successful teams, because they don't come out and beat themselves. Very rarely do they make mistakes, turn the ball over, have silly penalties. Got to eliminate that stuff when you're playing against the other best team in the league. Maybe their fifth offensive play, first one in Houston territory. Tiamu keeps the pocket moving, and a great job finding Lucky Jackson. Look at this guy fly. Boy, Jordan Tom, who does a nice job here, doesn't panic, keeps his eyes downfield, catches Lucky Jackson late, makes the first defender miss, gets the ball to the outside. Crafty play there by quarterback Jordan Tom. Tom who's always looking for him, throws it to Abram Smith out of the backfield, and he spins his way inside the 10, down inside the 7. Now, hold on a second. I thought that Houston threw it and D.C. <laughs> ran it. Officials time out <laughs> for an injured player. It's Devontae Beckett still down. Harry, I'm looking at that last play by Jordan Tamu, but from a wide receiver's perspective, how good a job did Lucky do there? Just putting himself in position to show the quarterback his chest and that he was available. He did a great job just finding the void in the zone when he's seen his quarterback scrambling. We call it scramble drill. If you want yep. that football, you better find an area so that quarterback can deliver it to you. Great job by Lucky Jackson. Yeah, and the short receiver is always going to go deep. A deep receiver is going to try to come back, show his numbers, face up to the quarterback. That's just a really well executed play outside of the pocket. Things break down. They're not perfect. You've got to find a way. Really impressive there by D.C. on offense. Meanwhile, with this Beckett injury, as he'll walk over to his sideline. D.C. is on the doorstep, and this is where you've seen Tamu, and then you've seen Derek King yeah. come into the game to play some quarterback. Hey, Anthony Wright, 50, 15. 14 Denver, 14 Denver squirrels. Okay, now you hear, you hear that act, those numbers. Even team numbers, the teens are the quarterback runs with a tag on it. So this could get tagged to a pass play. Ready, ready. Set, go. Throws, it's behind his intended target. That's Jackson again with A.J. Hindi all over him. Jordan Tom has just got to get that ball to the outside. Takes his bunch right tight. Race Bear, Race Bear, Race Bear. Race Bear. See those numbers there at the bottom go, of your screen. Go. Heavy quarterback run in this area of the field. Ready, ready. Haven't seen it yet tonight. Samu oh. over the head, but here comes the flag. Jackson was draped. Up oh, two flags, slow down. DPI, white number three. The foul took place in the end zone. Three. <laughs> Pass interference. Defense. Number three, 12, 12, 12. the foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the one-yard line 
It's first and goal. Sugar, sugar, sugar. So J and A Harris is going to be on the top right of your screen, and you're just going to see that tug and the wrap around, and then he gets wrapped around down in the lower body at his ankles, right in front of both of the officials. Easy call there, and Jordan Tom, who probably knew he had a free play. Ready, ready. Abram Smith, no. See, Abram Smith tried to push the pile here. Get to about the half yard line. A week ago versus St. Louis, had a long 14 play drive. Chose to go for it on fourth and goal from the one. Didn't get it. I think we're in four down territory here as well. Start the game, they did that, yeah, yep. last week. Jordan Mosley was great coming up there. No doubt. To make the tackle. Here we go. Ready, ready. Tackle. Tamu tries Smith again, and he loses yardage with flags everywhere. Three has a chop block. 58 and 53 chop block by the referee. Can be Kyle Murphy and G gotcha. Briley Moore, the tight end. Choice from Coach Phillips over here. For DC. Mark, go talk to him just in case. We're taking it back. Surely he wants it. Yeah. Personal foul. Chop block. Offense. Numbers 88 and 53. 15-yard penalty, second down. So right down the line, you see 88, 53, and they're claiming they're engaged with 97 right there, Glenn Logan. Instead of being at the one-yard line, now it's second and goal from outside the 15. Here we go, here we go. Be your Y unders right here. Now they're going to motion the cross, and now he's going to come back. Thomas looking that way. It's overthrown. Looking for Lucky Jackson. And Kerry Vincent all over him. He had it, too. If he would have just stuck in the middle, he had the tight end. He had the Y on the under route, sitting in the, the open void. Ace left. What do you think? One goes, all goes. Spread, uh, hey, Seth. Red, red, red. Red, 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 red. All go, all go. All right, four verticals here. All go. Everybody's running a streak route down the sideline. Snap it, snap it. Ready, ready. Take him. Gets it off with one on the play clock. Here comes the pressure to the end zone. Incomplete. Lots of fight. One handed fighting there. Jazz Ferguson and Kerry Vincent, and Vincent wins this one. See some hand fighting down the sideline here. Two players just jockeying for position, trying to find the football. The fact that you've got Kerry Vincent turning and, and, and looking to find the football with the Wide receiver, I thought that was really well defended there. Good no call by the officials. Matt McCrane leads the XFL now with eight field goals on the season, and DC's on the board. Well, let's tell you what's going to happen next week in XFL week number seven, the Sea Dragons and the Renegades on FX on Friday night. Then Saturday, we have a doubleheader. First on ESPN, two at three with the Brahmas and the Vipers. Then the defenders are in Orlando to play the Guardians at six on ESPN. And Sunday, it's the Battle Hawks and the Roughnecks. That's a 2 p.m. start on ESPN. It should be a good win, A.J. McCarron in St. Louis against this Houston team. Yeah, against this Houston team. And then, of course, D.C.'s got to go on the road. Now, it's Monday night, so we've got a short week for both of these teams. They're going to be traveling on Friday, playing uh, Saturday that weekend. So, quick turnaround, see who uh, can handle it. Yeah, Houston gets an extra day on yep. Sunday, but DC still a short week, five days for D.C. to turn this around. They're down five here towards the end of the first quarter. Best two teams in the XFL. D.C., the only undefeated team left in the league, both in terrific position to make it to the postseason. Semifinals 
And championship week coming up in a few weeks. This Lee gets it at the goal line. And he's not, well, yes, he's going to break a tackle and get past the 25-yard line. Great extra effort by Dejan. What happened to the Houston Roughnecks offense last week, Luke, in Seattle? This right here. No explosive plays. And that's what they've got to get back to. Now, they've taken what the defense has given them tonight, hey, but a lot of underneath right. stuff. Same Broncos there, Blazer on one, ready? They got to get back Same to those Broncos explosive there. 20, 40, 35 yard plus plays that made the, that were a staple of this offense the first four weeks. Go! Borgie right. scored that touchdown and he gets the football first on this drive for a couple. the cell to the left side five yard out Justin Here Smith. Here we go. Hey. Red F Comet. Red Z F corner. Ben Putman has Comet. half the mess. Z corner. Oh, one, ready? 16 oh, seconds. Right. Here AJ Smith yeah, talking. Right. We got the man. Ben money money money. You hear that? Money money on the dreads. Letting everybody know what they got. Telling them what might be the right read. Silver swings it out to Borgie. And he gets up near the 29. Blocking. Yeah no he he two Brandon two went with him. Ben. Stormy Sportsbook is coming up at the end of the first quarter here. Go. And this should be the last play. In fact, they won't even get it off. It'll be a third and eight to start the second quarter. This is the end of the first quarter. Houston leads undefeated D.C. 8-3 on a beautiful night in our nation's capital. Stormy, give us your sports book on the other side. Over the midway point of the XFL season. And with that, we're starting to gauge which teams have really started to separate themselves from the pack. Two of us, two of them, on the field behind us here in Houston and D.C. The defenders undefeated. They are the favorite to win the 2023 XFL championship at plus 135. Houston not far behind at plus 200. And it's interesting. You see the preseason numbers there. Both of these teams are really overlooked to start among the bottom three longest shots to contend for a title at 6-1 to one and 7-1, to one respectively. Taylor I got to get a beer snake update from you in a minute Silvers goes down the sideline there's a flag down this yeah. is the home yeah, of the beer snake the whole, the whole. 15 15 defense the result of the plays an incomplete pass we're gonna go five yards previous auto first 15 right yes sir prior to the pass holding Defense number 15. Five yard penalty and automatic first time. DC fans don't like it when Michael we'll get jo Joseph gets flagged. Do you agree with the sports books, Lugs? These are the best two teams and have the best chance to get to the championship at this point. I do because I think Vegas, I, I, I think from a betting perspective, they see the two teams that make the least mistakes. The two teams that have been most productive offensively have shown they've had the best offensive line play in the league, and that's carrying a lot of weight with betters right now. First and ten, and it's hey, McDonald giving to Borgie, goals. and he doesn't right, get much. Go. Brandon, go. Give me Hawaii, 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 Hawaii. Trips left, trips left, Red Z Uno. Trips left, Red Z Uno. How cool is it? Z Uno, just regular Z Uno. Yeah. A guy who's been doing this a couple of years is going up against Greg Williams, who's been doing it forever. Yeah. Silver slings it and it's over the head of Cedric Bird. And Thula Kelly in coverage, third down. Go! Hard, hard. Go! Pace 
pressing pressure. Silvers had to get rid of it in a hurry as he had a couple of defenders in the backfield. It's fourth down. Dewan Neal was all over Silvers. Yeah, you see the pressure off of the left side. They do a really nice job of ensuring that Brandon Silvers cannot vacate. If he's going to do anything, he's got to step up where the pressure's coming or he's got to get the ball out. And that's Greg Williams for you. He gets you backed up, third and eight plus. He's going to come after you and dare you to beat him one-on-one. -on -one. Let me give Kentrell Bryce some love for being in the backfield there, too. Good punt by Porter. Fielded by Ezard. Inside the 20. Gets around the corner and slides down. Safe at the 34. 12.54 to go until halftime. D.C. trails Houston 8-3. Your snake still lives in Washington, D.C. It does, but I'll tell you what. Right there, she better hurry up, all right? That thing's about <laughs> to pass her by. Pass her, that's, yeah. that's a good first quarter build on our way throughout the course of this game. This if the guy, beer snake prevails. He's the happiest guy in the world there. Oh, we're going to get to him. the beer snake. Yeah, we're oh, going to get to him. Stormy's going to do some investigative reporting for us on him. Heavy is the shoulder bit. that wears the cup. <laughs> Here's the handoff. It goes to Reichwell Armstead, and he doesn't get anything. So oftentimes, what you'll hear in every level of football is you're going to see these personnel grouping numbers, right? And the first number is going to be your running back. Your second number is going to be your tight end. A lot of that's going to dictate how you operate offensively. You know, if you're going to have more tight ends and more running backs, you're, you're likely going to be a little bit more run heavy. You're going to be a little bit more spread, like 10 and 11 personnel, a little bit more balanced. This time on through the air, and it's a bullet. First down at midfield to Josh Hammond. Great delivery by Tamu there to find him. 11, 11, 11. Jordan Tom, who just nice, nice and poised. You get the backfield action, step in and right across the middle, foot in front of the numbers. Josh Hammond, the 22. former Florida 22. Gator, coming up with a big one over the middle. That's Ole Miss to Florida. Yeah. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Tackle. Make the handoff, and again, it's Hammond. Can't stop that slant, but he gets crushed at the 36. Pick up a 14, Hindi delivering the hit. There's Wade Phillips, more than 40 years in coaching, and Reggie Barlow, such a good collegiate career. It's Armstead still, and he'll get a couple. Fred Kais said to us before the game, Luke, it'll be 60-40 with those two running backs. Yeah, there's no doubt. And then they'll go with the hot hand. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Look at the pace. Ready, ready. Houston's got to line up. Tackle. Went quickly again, and it's caught by Jaquez Ezard, and he's inside the 35 down to the 33. You talk about going quickly. Kice loves to change formations. Let's Keep that box, defense right? guessing. Keep him guessing. Go fast. Line up left. quickly. Troy left. Troy left. Troy left. Troy left. Yellow. Z Yellow. flood. Z flood. Troy Yellow. left. Z Yellow. Z flood. Yellow. Z flood. Yellow's going to be your protection. Levels, levels. This could be right, four down territory here, too. Here yep. Ready, ready. Set, go. On a third and eight. Tamu, the home run ball to Blair just over his head. Incomplete. Well, let's see what Coach Barlow decides to do here. Yeah, we got to go. This is a Man. little too far out of their range. Man, well, you good from there? That's, huh? That's a little deep, huh? No, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Coach Barlow talking to his <laughs> kicker right there. <laughs> it's too deep for you, huh? 50-yard field goal? Nope. Instead, go. go for it on fourth and eight. Ready, ready. There go. Tamu to the sideline. Gosh, he had him open. Lucky Jackson. But here comes a flag. Opposite end of the field. Four. Look at it. Oh, oh. Illegal contact. Defense number four. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Wade Phillips is saying, What? William Likely? What did he do? Auto first. 
You hear Coach Wade Phillips right there as a reminder. Can we challenge it? First down and 10. Little red chip there below the timeout you see at the bottom of your screen. Can we challenge it? That, that's a challenge for any okay. play. You just have to have a timeout in order to challenge a play. You see our guy, do. Dean Blandino, taking a look at it there. 28, 28, 28. All right, they're going to check run. They're going to go 28. That's the outside zone to the right. Hey, they call timeout. Yeah. Right, here we go. Seconds. He's calling. He's calling timeout. Is he challenging though? That's what. Because I'm looking. I'm looking at my my left 25, which is my best right. shot. Hey, let coach know if he wants to challenge. He can challenge it. Dean yep, I've got the shot. I'm looking at left. Appetite for that. He's good. He's good over here. Okay, he's he's good. Yeah. No challenge. Go. All right, here we go. go Thank we you. called timeout already. Here we go, men, crew. Can we go ahead and do it? He needs to. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. He's he's listening to his staff, and his staff telling him, "You're not going to get it. Don't do it." They thought about it. That's why they called the timeout. Not positive because you don't get it back. Something that's bailed, lost in this is Jordan Thomas bailed out on a bad throw to yeah, Lucky Jackson. No there. doubt, yeah. Got glossed over. Now we have Derek King in the ballgame at quarterback for the first time. Leads the XFL in rushing touchdowns, and his man on the end wasn't set. I'm out offense. Sorry. So, so confusion with King coming into the game. 30 seconds. I'm going 23. Please can't run a flame out of that. Nobody over there. Nobody. Coming up Thursday, it's the latest episode of the XFL docuseries, Player 54, an all-access look at the league and its players you can't get anywhere else. Player 54, Episode 5, Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. I love that series, getting to know these guys, many of which are journeymen that have tried so hard to make their mark as professional players. Sometimes you just need to be in the right place at the right time, the right coach, the right opportunity. And then when you have that moment, you have to seize it because they're going to come very, very few and far between. That's the voice of an XFL champion, Tom Lugo. <laughs> I keep trying to give my ring away. <laughs> you might have that chance in a few weeks. I know it. To have some others join right, the party. Here we go. Here we go. Wait, wait. Take go. King stays in there, hands it to Armstead, gets around the edge. And the versatile running back gets inside the 25, down near the 22. King leads the XFL, any player, all players, not just quarterbacks, in rushing touchdowns. Well, on his completion percentage, you see it right there, he's six of eight on the season, so not a lot of tosses, but enough to keep you honest. Hey, yellow, 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 yellow. Gotta shoot, check, shoot, check, shoot. He's also thrown a touchdown. It's five on the ground. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Wait, ready, let's go. Eighth play of the drive, and King dumps it off wisely, and Armstead's got daylight, and trucks his first way down. near a first down. It's just his second catch of the year. See, this is where having Derek King in the game throwing the football. Hey, lady, 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 lady. Let's go. Really puts strain on the defense. Because you think he's in there just to run it. They haven't been good on third down. 0 of 3 tonight, and Smith is hit. And it's going to be marked short. Brian Stewart's defense has met Abram Smith in the hole a number of times so far. Yeah, they've done a really nice job at the line of scrimmage. And you know, there's six players on this defense for, for Brian Stewart that played for him at various spots throughout the collegiate ranks. So a lot of familiarity with scheme, doing what guys ask him to do. I'm a little surprised by this, Taylor. Reggie Barlow doesn't like what he's seen in short yardage situations I, I so far. It. It's a 
37-yard field goal try from a crane. Ari has one in this game. And he misses this one to the right. After all of that, DC gets nothing. We good. So that's a killer for DC. Because you start getting control of the clock and you go the length of the field, you kick a field goal, you come up with nothing. Wade Phillips in Houston absolutely loving it. His Roughnecks, Roughnecks on the road, one of the most hostile environments in the league here in our capital, 8-3 Houston. Moderate to severe. Stars from week six in the XFL. Blake Jackson went off six catches, 79 yards and a touchdown. And the ageless A.J. McCarron does it again with three more touchdowns in the St. Louis victory as they whip Vegas. And John Parker Romo, is he related to Tony Romo and John Parker Wilson? <laughs> three for three with a 56-yard field goal. San Antonio beats Arlington 15 to nine. How did I know that was coming? <laughs> Houston has controlled the football. Their defense has been great. Silvers has been solid. They have an 8-3 lead. He's pumping twice, and he just throws it in the dirt, doesn't like what he sees. It's second down. Greg Williams has so much confidence in his defense that he sets. All right, now pay attention to draw. Hot palms, 57 fists. Pay attention to draw. Quarterback draw, running back draw. Greg Williams, I was referencing their, their free safety. When you look at the, the pre-snap alignment, they're so confident in their, in their 10 of their 11 players. Look at where these guys are set up. They're so far deep into the into the back of the secondary. Like 25 yards down the yeah. field. Yeah. That's just a dump off, and it's effective to Travell Harris. Right, here we go. Pay attention. Okay, Frisco, L.A., Frisco, L.A., Frisco, Frisco, L.A. Frisco, L.A. Press. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, it's, it's not Frisco. Hey, it's not Frisco. It's automatic front. Automatic front 14. Alert. QCBR. QCBR. Right. Trio right. X scoot in. X scoot in. You're meshing. You're meshing. Ten defenders get closer to the line on this third and two. And it is a fade that's incomplete for McDonald. Looking down the sideline to Borgie. And for the first time tonight, D.C. forces a three and out. Hard count alert. Hey, whoever's out there, Hines. Hines, head bob, hard count alert. Tell them, Hines, tell them, hard count and head. It's a great job right there, guys, by linebacker Francis Bernard, who's making his return after a two-game suspension. I was able to talk to Davin Bellamy this week, and he said Francis is their quarterback on defense. Very instinctive, sometimes goes off, off script, but that's because he studies and understands what's going on in the football field. Yeah, that's your guy, Harry. I know you've loved watching him tonight. Ezard gets it back near the 40-yard line. Just love, you just love the aggressiveness of D.C. defensively. They don't care what you're going to be in, what your personnel grouping is. They're going to crowd the line of scrimmage. They're going to come after you. It, it, they're, they're daring you and essentially saying, we think we're better than you. And we don't think your guys can separate versus our guys, which Houston offensively, a lot of people would agree that maybe they're the fastest team in the league, even without John Trey Kirkland. D.C. doesn't care. They're going to play what they play. So jealous of the Palomalu-like hair he's got there, too. <laughs> See forces Houston off the field. Best starting po field position for D.C. They cannot run the ball yet tonight against this Houston defense. And Abram Smith has been bottled up. Just four carries for seven yards before that run for a few. Well, it's really been the short yardage downs, right? Third and two, third and one, third and one. Failed to convert on all three. Here we go, here we go. Get set, get set. Ready, ready. Set, go. On second and six. Fakes it to Smith and is dropped by Hammond. It'll set up a third and six, and Coach Kice is going to call the play. Texas Bunch, Texas Bunch, Zach. Zach. Red, wide red, mesh. mesh. Red, red wide, wide mesh. mesh. Yep. All right, now, Luke, who can hear that? So what they've done here at D.C., you're going to have all the receivers, the center, and the quarterback. The back and the rest of the offensive line do not have that in their ear. Communication and it works as it gets past the 50. It's caught by Ethan Wolf. 
And it's a first down well, for the defenders. Twins right, Alaska. Twins right, Alaska. Twins right, Alaska. Twins right, Alaska. Let's see the mess gun, gun, here with gun. the tight end. Alaska. Comes right underneath, and they kind of create a pick. Well, if you're on offense, you call it a rub because rubs are legal and picks are illegal. Ready, ready. There go. Go. 82 slant. Hey, 82, 82, 82, 82. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Thank you. And on the first down throw, it's another first down to Lucky Jackson. And he sits down inside the 35. Left, 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 left. Here come the defenders. See how quickly they get to the line of scrimmage, how quickly Fred Kais gets to play in. Houston still isn't lined up. Going fast, Harry. That's what Coach Kais wants. He wants the tempo. Smith. Again, nowhere to go. Jack Heflin makes the tackle. Smith just six carries for 11 yards tonight. Well, that's the play that they scored on a 71-yard touchdown last week. Much better run fits by Houston. Under center. Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. Here we go, here we go. Oh, Lenny, Lenny, Lenny. One, two, nine. Here we go. Ready, ready. There go. Tiamu on the run, throws, and Jackson out of bounds. He caught that, right? Lucky says, I got one in. That's all you need in the XFL. Let's take a look here along the sideline. He's dragging. Ooh. See what this angle looks like. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. Still would have this play and the next play. I got control with, just let me know, there's no movement. He sticks it. I've got that foot down. Far hand out was my other shot. Like? He dragged that foot in bounds. Go ahead, let it go. Yeah, right, 25 is great too. Okay, we, we've got, we're going to overturn it to a catch. We're going to give you a spot now. I'm going to give you a spot. Wait, wait. Okay, after review, the ruling on the field has been overturned. It is a catch. It's going to be 15-yard line, right hash, no. one and ten. Last First and ten. Thank you. You got it. After further review, the play has been overturned to a completed pass. It'll be DC's ball, first and 10 from the 15 yard line. As long as you have a timeout, you can review it. It's overturned. The will start on the signal. Lucky's inbounds foot was down before the out of bounds foot was. Really fantastic sideline awareness and, and body control and really concentration to mirror the catch with the footwork. And once again, DC in the red area, but can they complete the deal? Have not been able to run the football effectively in short yarded situations here we go, here we go. to this point. A move. Plenty of time and underneath. Inside the five, down inside the four goes Wolf. Left, skins left, Alaska. Alaska. Hey, Alaska, left. Skins left, skins left. Alaska. Alaska, skins left. Hey, make it Great opportunity here to show Jordan Tom, who working through progressions, doesn't like it, comes right down to his deep crosser. And Ethan Wolf, the former Tennessee tight end, just really good poise, delivery, timing, and working through progressions there by Tom. 81, 81, 81, 81. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Thank you. Tom, who quickly and incomplete, he was looking for Blair, and Blair was draped by a Jane A. Harris. This. DC offense was stagnant yeah, yeah, yeah. the last time they were down here. Yep. Texas left bunch. Texas left bunch. Two under F shoot. Stand well top to lock. Two Stick under. Up. Lock and low. Lock and low. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Still Tiamu out there, not Deer King. Yep. And just as effective as a run as a runner. Throwing again, he's got his receiver at the goal line, but he's stone short. Abram Smith at the goal line was kept out. Skins, skins, skins. Skins. 
Well, I tell you, if Jordan Tom who throws this a half step early, Abram Smith walks into the end zone. I thought it took him a little this long to get it to him. The two minute warning. What a play by A.J. Hindi to keep D.C. out of the end zone at the two minute mark. Really nice tackle uh, out into the flat to save a touchdown. Right. Boom. Just momentum. And that ball is so close to crossing the plane. Didn't should be set right there about two inch line. He's a Maryland Terrapin. He's fired to be back home. The goal line and the extra effort by the offensive line pushes Abram Smith into the end zone. Mike Mayetti, who they call Jersey Mike, the offensive center. Liam Ryan, 63. Kyle Murphy, <laughs> that left side, and then the push. The lower body leverage of Abram Smith is the 12th rushing touchdown for D.C. so far this season. It leads the XFL going for two and the lead. Tom who's under pressure and just has to get rid of it. Emmanuel Ellerby is shot out of a cannon. Shot out of a cannon took out one of our officials there. <laughs> That's Reggie Smith. I love it. A lesser athlete wouldn't have gotten hit. Oh. <laughs> a lesser athlete wouldn't have gotten hit. That's great. He goes, darn it, my hat got dirty. Harry Douglas needs to go rough up Reggie about that. Yep. Wade Phillips team trails DC now 9 8 after this six pointer. And Houston will get the ball back with the best two teams in the XFL on display here on this Monday night. Dejan Lee from the five. Flying past the 30 up near the 40 yard line. Harry, who you got? I got wide receiver Lucky Jackson right here. Each week you're being consistent making plays for this team. The acrobatic catch on the sideline. You must do some yoga, my man. <laughs> nah, man, we just prepare hard throughout the week, man, and it translates over to the game. Great job catching the ball with your hands on the slant route. What did you see coverage wise? Uh, I seen the uh, corner playing off. I knew I was going to have a free release, just run my route uh, and look for the ball. Get you the ball and everybody's going to be lucky, right? That's right. Mama, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Three <laughs> catches for 70 yards. And Mama back in Lexington, Kentucky, has got to love watching Lucky play like this. Well, how about these wideouts for D.C.? Balls being thrown all over the lot, something we haven't seen in the first five weeks. But really, it's just about adjustments in game to what Houston's been doing on defense. If they're going to load the box, D.C. is going to throw it. Silver just has to ground it. This D.C. defense has stepped up in the second quarter. Houston only has 10 yards in this quarter. Number 43, Francis Bernard, sniffs this out. He sees Max Borgie trying to sneak out, and he comes and just Velcros himself to the back. There's nowhere to go with the ball for Brandon Silva. What is this? Here's a flag that comes in late. They tackle the running back. They tackle the, the running back. What are you looking at? Where there was no eligible receiver. Intentional what? grounding. They tackle Offense. Number 12. I don't know how I mean. I know the rules. Foul will be placed at the spot of the foul. Loss of down. It's second well, down. And he hit it. And he hit it. And I tried to throw it right here. And he hit it. I didn't throw that hits it. I looked right there. I'll throw it. I mean, he helped. Curious to know, because Max Borgie is the intended target here. And had he thrown the ball that ain't your call. I know. directly in front of him where Borgie yeah, was, maybe this this is maybe what the officials are seeing. You see Francis Bernard, 43. <laughs> Ten second runoff. Will the clock operator please reset the clock to one minute, 36 seconds, and the clock will start on my signal. Expect zone here. Expect zone. 
trips left, trips left, and let's go uh, blue. Tri or trips left, red knife. Trips left, red knife. Here we go, trips left, red knife. Oh, and ready? Red. Yeah, red tech, red tech. All right, now let's check it, check it. Go divide, set one over the middle. Here we go. Go. Second and 22. Uh -huh. Silvers surveying and he throws intercepted off the carom it's picked off and this is going to be a house call 40 yards Santos Ramirez DC's undefeated in part, Luke's, because they've been forcing pick sixes all year. That's their third. That's their third. Brandon Silvers, when he was the quarterback of the Seattle Sea Dragons in 2020, threw a pick six in this stadium against the DC defenders. And that time, it's just about the two deep safeties. Look how deep the safeties are playing right here. And they just keep their eyes forward on Brandon Silvers, follow him all the way. And then it's tip drill. Arkansas Razorback standout gives Houston a seven-point lead, and they want two more, but there's a flag. Encroachment number 52. But we got it on 52. I got it. No, I got it on 11. 11 white. 11, 11. white foul. Encroachment. Defense, number 11, penalized half the distance to the goal, try for point. Now it's still for two points here now. So you've just gained some yardage, got a better advantage here. Percentage has went up. Let's see if that changes the play call here for Coach Kice. Oh, they're in 10 personnel. Could be quarterback run. Tamu throws, easy pitch and catch to Hammond. 17 unanswered points for D.C., Harry Douglas. We're down here with Santos Ramirez. It's one thing to catch an interception. It's another thing to get in the end zone. How does that end zone taste? Man, like peach and cream, man. Uh, you know, it was just amazing oh, just getting there. Get our team up real quick, get some momentum going. Man, next play, Metelli, though. But great, go back out there. But it felt great getting the end zone. Good job. He said peaches and cream, y'all, like, <laughs> like 112, the music group. Hey, Harry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You already know. <laughs> Harry, you better get busy and get over to Jordan Tomu or Josh Hammonds because you just got a touchdown in your lap, too. 17 to 8, D.C. over Houston. Luke, you just used to be on the field in Fayetteville watching Ramirez <laughs> yeah. make tackle after tackle for the Razorbacks. Been a long journey to the XFL. Greg Williams loves him, the defensive coordinator for DC, just because he understands what's asked of him, understands how to get lined, align everybody else. Dejon Lee from the three. As the DC fans here at Audi Field serenade the Roughnecks with living on a prayer. That was a good job, too, I might add. That was and pretty that, good. That beer snake's getting taller and taller. I think ultimately what we have found out about the beer snake is you got to be a minimum of halfway up before halftime to ensure that you get to the top Blue. level. X line, Owen, ready? Blue. See what Houston has here with about a minute remaining. See how aggressive they are. They've done nothing in this second quarter. Starting at their own 36. Silvers takes a shot. Got his man. It's Cedric Bird. Go, go, go. All right, give me trips right, red, GTFO. Trips right, hey, red, right. GTFO. Hey, red, trips red, right, red, 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 GTFO. Frisco, Frisco. Now, GTFO is get the you know what open. <laughs> and that's exactly what they're telling their guys. Oh, Silvers is crushed. 
He had no chance back there. It was a bull rush. Davin Bellamy. They just overload the left side. Two on one on the left side offensive tackle. Give Michael Joseph some credit too. Yeah. What's so impressive about Michael Joseph? He's their corner. And now they move him into the inside. They play him at nickel. They bring him off in rush situations. They're constantly bringing corner cats off the edge. He's just such a versatile football player. With all the momentum that DC has right here, you, if you're Houston, you got to get some points on the board before the half, right? Uh, yeah, you absolutely have to because keep in mind, DC gets the ball coming out of the locker. Here we go. First right up. Red. What a huge play to come up with after a long completion. Looks like momentum swinging back to Houston just for a moment. Plus, this has a big leg, but he hasn't made one more than 42 yards. So you need another 15 or 20 to give him a chance. Silvers is going down again. Santos Ramirez was the first to him. He got the pick six, and now he's got a sack. Well, no matter what you do here, you don't have enough. The numbers don't add up. If you're Houston and you're Brandon Silvers, even if you don't have your check down, your outlet versus pressure, Detroit, Detroit, Detroit. you just got to get the ball out. You can't take a sack in that position. Third and a mile with the clock running. He just handed off to Borgie. He gets it to midfield. Remember, as Luke's just told you, DC gets the football first in the second half, and they've scored 17 unanswered points. The only undefeated team in the XFL feeling the momentum as they go into their locker room here at Audi Field. Really done it in all three phases, Luke's. They have off to a slow start, and they've done it differently than they've done in the previous five weeks. They've thrown it to move the football. Harry's got Coach Barlow. Coach, your defense has really stepped it up a lot. Santos Ramirez is all over the place. What do you got to say for your D right now? Oh uh, yeah, they stepped it up. We made the adjustments here uh, after the first quarter or so. Uh, Greg's been dialing it up. The guys have been beating their guys, so uh, it's great to score on defense and. Uh, that gave us a little more momentum. Your wide receiver, Lucky Jackson, has been so consistent for you all season. Came up big on those last drives, two big catches. How has Lucky been for your team? Lucky has been lucky. He's a guy that can ball out, and we got to find a way to continue to get him the ball. But Monday night football, man, Monday night football on the biggest station of all sports with this atmosphere, you like football? I love football, Coach. <laughs> we do, too. There you go. <laughs> and it was bound to happen if you send both teams into the same tunnel. Oh, yeah. You knew it was going to get chippy down there, right? There's no doubt. The beer snake is going crazy. Audi Field is rocking. Uh, they have not looked like this all year long, and Houston cannot sustain anything, Taylor. It's been very frustrating to watch them. They haven't been able to make plays versus man-to-man -man coverage, which they've done about to everybody in the league up to this point. Those were our progressive first-half stats. And as you said, Luke's D.C. gets the football first in the second half. Again, if you've just been jumping around, only five-yard separation between the two teams on a kickoff. You can't move until the returner fields it. Ezard gets up to near the 28-yard line. Stormy, I saw you down in that Houston locker room. What were they saying? Well, Wade Phillips went up to everybody right before they came back out here and said it's a new half. 
let's beat him down how we know how. Although, I'll, I'll tell you, the words were a little bit more colorful than that. But he said he didn't want to hear anything but positivity here on the sideline. The message was one play at a time. Forget the last one. Get to the next one. Nobody can do this alone. They have to do this together if they want to respond. But got to stay composed and right here out the gate. Said get a stop. Let's try to force a turnover okay, and get things go. moving. Ready, ready. Set, go. Tamu. Little throw, and he's got Lucky Jackson wide open, slams on the brakes, and moves back down the field inside the 30. What a game for Lucky so far. That's 43 more. Now watch what Lucky Jackson does right here. He's going to run, and it looks like a slant, but he takes it up, and they run the sluggo, a slant and go off of the backfield action. And, oh, got him. Harry, what, what's the key to the sluggo route, in your opinion, to get somebody to bite? It's all about the head action. You have to sell your head and eyes to the quarterback, get that defender to bite. Next thing you know, I'm gone, coach. <laughs> they do mark it back at the 36. You saw where Lucky stepped out. He has four catches for 106 yards. His Armstead goes straight ahead there. You know, we talk about loading the box, and, and you looked at Houston right there on that first play. and. Fred Kaisi, offensive coordinator, is just saying, we're just going to throw it if you're going to keep doing this, and they're, they're getting into a rhythm here tonight. Big night for the former Western Kentucky standout. Houston has been good stopping this D.C. ground attack, though. Not much for Armstead there. Now it's third down. Brian Stewart's defense. Dejo, alert set. Dejo, Dejo, San Tonto one. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Here we go, here we go. Bunch, bunch. Ready, ready. Set, go. Hey, two nine, two nine, two nine. Hey, under, 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 under. We're going to run right out here. Ready, ready. 29. Armstead bounces off a defender. First down, D.C. as he turns the corner. Well, this is all Reichwell Armstead right here breaking. Uh, actually, not breaking, but just extending past that ankle tackle. Getting the first down. Coach Kais called him a read and react back. You saw it there. Yeah. Lenny, Lenny. One, two, nine. Two, nine. One, two, nine. Ready, ready. Check him. Stead goes out. That's Abram Smith. They fake it to sling it to the big tight end. Briley Moore and Moore does a flip. <laughs> Those tight ends love to be airborne, don't they? <laughs> don't play the game off your feet. Briley Moore, nice job. Ethan Wolf holds off on what could have been a block in the back. We're gonna do. We're gonna run it off to the left again. Ready, ready, let go. Here's Smith inside the five. Second and goal from there. I'm sorry, H delay. All right, you're going to see that backfield action here. 82 fade. 82 fade. 82, 82. Ready, ready. Set, go. Looking at that single coverage, Luke's pointed out. Lucky beats the man again, but incomplete. They say he was out of bounds. Raleigh Tejada on him. I like the play call, though. Fred Kais, the offensive coordinator, sees the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Just run out of real estate here. In a low blow. Let's go UNS. No, it's a contact foul. It, can't, it cannot be a UNS. UNR, you want to toss him? You feel he gave a low blow? He definitely is a low blow. What, who was it on? 96 in the defense. 96 defense. You thought it was dirty and flagrant? Strong. Let's toss him. Yep. Ooh. It's Jack Heflin. After the play, flagrant personal foul. 
by the defense, number 96, for a low blow. Penalized half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Number 96 has been disqualified from the game. Dean, what do you think on that for a low blow uh, back in our command pass, center? Incomplete pass was the result of the play. Yep, we're going from the four to the two. It's a dead ball foul. He he hit him. Yeah, he hit him right well after the play. Correct call there, Dean. Yeah, you like that call, Dean? Yeah, we looked at we looked at it was well after the play, and, and he hit him low, and uh, and it was a flagrant personal foul. The officials felt that it warranted an ejection. We looked at the video and agreed. Okay. So Sean Mustin, number 94, who just came off of injured reserve. Along the defensive front is going to be joining this Houston front now. Hasn't played a lot of football. Will be his first action uh, tonight. Keep an eye on 94. Is that man right there? Heflin 96 no longer participating. Here you go, here you go. Not playing well in the sandbox with others. Ready, ready. Set, go. Tom who turns, throws into double coverage. Here's a flag down. He was trying to get it to Ethan Wolf. Wolf had no chance to make a play. Pass interference. Defense number 18. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball will be placed at the one yard line. It's first and goal. Jordan Mosley collided with a teammate there. Yeah, it's almost more contact amongst teammates. A.J. Hende uh, and, and Mosley with the intended target kind of sneaking between the two of them. Let's see what Wade Phillips decides. It's, it's a one-yard penalty, and it gives them another first down. Sure. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. Armstead trying to push that pile. No signal yet. Did the ball come? No, they say it's down. The ball carries forward progress and ended at second down. How about this defensive line for the now, Roughnecks tonight? Plow right, 23 again. Plow right, plow right, 23. Well, they're, un they're undermanned, but they're holding up on the inside. Eight-yard drive here, 71 yards to open up the third quarter. What an impressive drive for D.C. coming out of the locker room. Timeout, Wade Phillips. Fumble. He was blowing That's the That's a fumble. Yeah, we want to build this forward progress. Oh, come on. He wasn't moving. In the, in the Never mind. God. He called forward progress. Houston calls his first timeout of the half. 30 seconds in there. That is, he was still moving. Keep your feet under you. Keep your feet under you. Dean, do you like this call as far as forward momentum? I do. I do like it for forward progress. The runner's progress was stopped. The whistles came in. The officials came in blowing the whistles. The play was over. Then the defender ripped yep. it out. That's a classic ruling of forward progress. Yeah, it looked like the running back, by the time his progress was stopped, was actually moving laterally as well. Absolutely. You got to love how locked in Wade Phillips is, though. Still 40-plus years into his coaching oh. career. He's having the time of his life. He's got the best team in his division at four and one, but his team is down nine, and DC's at the doorstep. Tamu throws, caught, touchdown! Big Alex Ellis with his second catch of the year. And another six cups gets added to the Bear Snake. Really nice block in the backfield by Reichwell Armstead right there. Allows Jordan Tom who to 
throw a dart to the upfield outside shoulder of Ellis. Jordan Ta'amu coming of age in the passing game when they need him too most. Ellis threw the ball at the beer at the beer snake. Well, you never know. It might land in one of the cups. He just got here three weeks ago, and that's his first touchdown. Going for two again. Watch out. Down he goes. Trent Harris untouched. Twenty-three unanswered points for the undefeated DC defenders. Tamu finds Alex Ellis in the back corner of Audi Field. Oh, God dang it. What's wrong? Tell me. They fumbled on the goal line. Oh, and they called it for a five. Yes. They, oh, I couldn't see it. But he, yeah. But he, if he'd have run over the over the line, they'd have called it a touchdown. He's still you. up and he's still pushing. We doing? knocked the ball out. I got you. Wade Phillips is upset with the call on the field. Dean Blandino agreed, though, with the officials there. He needs to be upset with his offense, Luke. They've yeah. done nothing on their last four drives. Yeah, they've got to come up with some answers. They have not handled pressure well and have not been able to get away from man-to-man -man coverage to create any plays in the passing game. From the six, back to the 26. Harry Douglas with the D.C. quarterback. Yeah, I'm with Jordan Tomu right now. It started coming out of halftime with the sluggle to Lucky Jackson. It finished with the touchdown pass to Ellis. What was the message in the locker room? You know, uh, we knew we were, gonna, we, were, we were going to get the ball back, so we just wanted to drive down and score. Uh, give our defense, defense some rest, uh, hopefully get the ball back and score again. Our, our mentality is to always score and uh, be on top of them. What about your offensive coordinator, Fred Kice? Yeah. Always putting you guys in the right position, being balanced on offense. What do you got to say about Coach? You know, I love Coach. I love everything he's about. Uh, you know, he's a godly man, and I am myself. So just, you know, we, we build a good chemistry during, uh, during camp, and while the seasons keep going week by week. So I'm excited that he's our, our OC. Thanks, Jordan. Yes, sir, thank you. His defense has been terrific since the start of the second quarter. That's a loss of two there by Max Borgie, so it's second and long for the Houston offense. Yeah, Fred Kai's still working, even though they're on defense, trying to figure out what the plan's going to be on the next drive. Go! Uh -huh. Silvers, that's almost picked off. It was deflected. Hey, Trent's left, purple. Oh, one ready. Purple, purple. See Brandon Silvers right here tries to purple, throw a purple. shot. And he actually ends up hitting his offensive lineman in the back of the head. James Moore, number 79. How does Go. Houston respond here in a third and 12? Better respond with a first down, that's how. Hey, Eagle protect, Eagle protect. Adrian, yeah, all these Eagle guys protect. back here, they're going to make him, Ernie. No press coverage, three-man rush. And they run it with Bryson Alleen, and Alleen gets close to that first down, but a couple yards shy. It's fourth down, midway through the third quarter. Houston's down 15, but on their own end of the field. And here comes the punting team. Yeah, they've got to punt this. this is, if this was another 10 yards down the field, maybe. It's a fourth punt by Race Porter at all kinds of trouble last week having two blocked against Seattle. But he's been clean so far tonight. It would be late to get him on the field. And Houston has to call another timeout. That's a killer. Houston calls for a second timeout of the half. 30 seconds. Two blocked punts a week ago on the road at Seattle. And now you call a timeout. You're yeah. down to one timeout yeah. in the second half, playing from behind. Jump ball! Jump ball! Mm. Keep it. Jump ball! Jump ball! Wade Phillips cannot be a happy camper. This team was terrific the first four weeks of the season, but now, after this timeout, he calls the punt team off the field, Luke's. Uh, eight and a half minutes left in the third. 
You've got Cole McDonald, which could indicate some quarterback run. The personnel switches out for D.C. Snap it. Oh, you're good. Let him get set. Oh, the line, the left guard moved early. Number 21. I have a phone offense. Phone 21 offense. offense. I'm sorry, Reds. 22. The number I just have offense. No, 21. 21. False start. Offense. Multiple players. Five yard penalty. It's fourth down. Trying to Kate create some momentum, Luke's, and instead. Well, the they shoot themselves in the foot. The they just seem discombobulated there. That's the eighth penalty of the game for Houston. And and to have it on a a play where you got to decide if you're going to kick it, flip field position, or, or potentially go for it, you just run out of time right there. Not overly organized for Houston. Called a timeout and committed a penalty yeah. during that sequence. And now Porter will get this off. Ezard from the 22. Back near the 41 yard line. Hey, tomorrow night, the McDonald's All Americans take center stage as the top players from the East and the West square off. We'll start with the girls' game at 6 30 p.m. on ESPN2, followed by the boys' game on ESPN at 9. The McDonald's All American games, both from the Toyota Center in Houston, site of the Final Four as well. And Tom Luganville had a better chance of picking the final four than the rest of us this year. <laughs> that might be the most accurate thing you've ever said on broadcast television. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 we're getting about three quarters, go. folks. If they'd straighten that thing out, we'd, we'd definitely have what we need on the beer snake. Ready, ready. Set, go. Tamu. Nice grab and then a slide ahead ball, by Blair. Brian Stewart needs to get his defensive unit off the field quickly. Will Tonto four. Will Tonto four. Block him up. Will Tonto four. Block him up. Right, right. Block him up. Abram Smith has been bottled up tonight. Just nine carries. In under 20 yards. Sean Mustin, 94. In on the tackle there, just joined the team off of injury reserve this week for Houston. 71, Tucson, Gator. Tucson. 71, 71. 71, 71. Tucson, Gator. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. DC's converted three straight third downs. They take a shot here, and Blair draws the flag. Interesting to see who they're going to call this on. Pass interference. Defense number three. Spot of the foul. Automatic first down. The initial look, I thought Chris Blair might have pushed off, but early on, really grabby there by Jane Harris. Jane had the big game last week versus Seattle and losing call, and losing calls had that two those two interceptions. Houston, every time they seem to get themselves in a good position, ready, ready. Go. ends up having a negative play. Tamu the fingertips of Hammond. Oh, and they are going after Harris. Harry, what, what is so difficult about tracking the deep vertical ball from the wide receiver position? Well, it's the, the trajectory of the football, but that one should have been an easy catch. Yeah. And I would say the other one that Chris Blair had should have been a catch as well. That one was more so telling to the outside. That's a more difficult one, but the one that Josh Hammond just dropped, that should have been an easy touchdown. Tamu. There is a burst from Abram Smith. It'll be second and third and short. Here we go. Skin. 
skins tight. Skins Sam tight. Will, hey, Sam Will. Skins tight. Tonto lock. Lock. Yellow. Lock. Y mesh. Lock. Yellow. Look what we y got. mesh. If they give us good sets, go ahead and zebra that. Oh, zebra that. Zebra that. Zebra. Get down. Get down. Get down. Right, ready. Get, get, the, step, get the. Tamu. First down to his big tight end, Ethan Wolf. Sugar, 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 sugar. Come here, come here, come here, sugar, sugar. Texas right bunch, red, why not? Come on, ready. They're going right back to it again. Why mess with your tight end? Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Back up. Looking for him, covered up, and a flag down as Tamu goes down inside the 30. Flag down. Spin Mike. Force will like on number three, wide for squirting me with water. Where was he? Uh, on the sideline? Correct, behind me. Number three, yep. squirting you the water. Yes, you got it. <laughs> What's the result of the play? It's a, a 29. Down, down All right, it's a it's a foul in between downs. We're going to go half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down for DC. UNS on Houston. Okay. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number three. He squirted at the down judge with a water bottle. The penalty will be enforced half the distance to the goal. <laughs> Automatic first down. This is number three's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul as it relates to his potential disqualification. What is Ajayne Harris thinking? Seen some viral moments like that, Luke's in the oh, NFL. Yeah, I mean, just silly, stupid hey, penalties. Why you push me like that? Yeah. The nigga threw a flag, bro. That was on the sideline. Was ingested water on him. Was ingested water, water purposefully on the official. I, 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 don't, I don't know how we should. Handle. I, don't. I know that's not the type of environment we in particular. We know it's all we want. Either way. Why, why don't you get a chance? 14 and a half to the four and a half. He didn't have a water bottle. He just came off the field. I just huh? came off the field. He pushed me like, get off the way. I'm like, I just got subbed. Hey, here we go, please. Hey, go. 81, 81, 81, 81, 81. There we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. Tamu to the end zone. Blair can't make the grab. Good coverage by John Brennan. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Really good coverage. I would have loved to have seen this been a little bit more of a back shoulder ball. If you're going to throw it there, it's got to have a little more air underneath it. But the one thing Houston can't do, they cannot let some of their extracurriculars start dictating their play. They can't let it snowball on them in a negative way and become back. consumed by all the bad Wilder, stuff and not start yellow, focusing yellow, on the next play. Tamu goes down. Glenn Logan, the big defensive lineman, comes home. Glenn Logan just explosive and, and, and beats him off the ball. The other, right? And more flags whoa, 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 whoa. after the play. I don't know. That's just making it. That's making yeah. example out of one. It's, a, it's 11. I'm white. He's the one that shot me in the face. All right. So 11 white is our instigator. All right. So we're gonna pedal. Hold up. Hold up. Put his helmet on, Jay. Got a helmet off and a hoodie. You gotta get 22. You need to put your helmet on right now. All right. You need to have a helmet on on the field. All right. All right. So 11 white personal foul. We're going to enforce half the distance to the goal. Which auto first, Dan. Half the distance, auto first. Which makes sure it's first. Hey, we can't Personal get any foul, unnecessary roughness. 
Defense number 11. Penalized half the distance to the goal. It's an automatic first down. Again, one mistake on top of another mistake on top of another mistake. And now you're losing focus with your 11th penalty of the night. That's called a meltdown, Harry. Well, there's no reason for Houston to get discombobulated. They're only down 15 points. Right. Right. It's still early, in the, uh, late in the third quarter. You still have the fourth quarter. Just keep your composure and play football. Yeah, hang in there. Play the next down. And see Tavo do much of this tonight. And they were ready for it. Emmanuel Ellerby. And Charles Wiley coming in there. Texas bunch left. I'm going again. Zach. Why under? Zach, why? Zach. Why under? Red, red, red. Red, 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 red. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Here we go, let's here go. We go. Ready, ready. Zach, go. Tamu going down, throws it as Ellerby had him in his grasp and throw to the sideline. I threw it. The officials are pointing towards so a DC a defender. See Abram Smith. Leaks out. That's who Jordan Tom was trying to get the ball out to. See within the pocket here. We're gonna. That's not grounded. They ruled that four was in the area. Is what they said. What? The ball went four yards. Come on. Sean Mustin was slow to get up. Dean, what do you think of Wade Phillips' gripe here? Well, there's no question he's upset that it should have been intentional grounding. The officials did rule that number four was in the area, and Tamu so was trying to get the ball to number four. We do give the quarterback some leeway there, okay. and, uh, and we felt like number four was in the area to avoid the grounding. Official pointed at Abram Smith immediately when he threw that ball. Tamu this time will throw it to the end zone. Lucky couldn't catch it in bounds. It's fourth down. Well, it's not for lack of trying, is it? When they think they've got a shot, they've taken their shots. They've been so close, just haven't been able to connect, get the right trajectory, and good job with the hand. Getting it up in there by Kari Vincent to break that thing up. And despite the penalties, Taylor, despite the snafus, Houston forces a field goal. Matt McCrane is one of two tonight. This from 32 yards, and this is straight through there, but there is more laundry on the field. Of course we do. DOF 95. DOF 95. It'll be. Uh, All right. Since it's more than 10, they'll likely decline it. All right. DOF 95 lined up. Let's figure it out what they want to do. Figure out if they want the DOF. They want the points. Number 98. The penalty is declined. The result of the play. A successful field goal. Timeout. Timeout. Well, it's 26 to 8 with the rules of the XFL. That means this is still a two possession game. <laughs> That's right. It's a beautiful night in our nation's capital, and the undefended defenders are looking great. First, there's an idea, and you do something about it for the a man had a dream. He had a vision, and he would turn that vision with all of his friends into a sea of people creating the largest beer snake in our nation's capital. This has gone almost all the way to the top of the end zone. And 
considering the history of our nation's capital, maybe the longest beer snake in the history of our country. <laughs> Ball is fielded at the two by Dejon Lee. And Lee can't get the edge, forget it. Cameron Lewis ignites the beer snake people right behind him. Tom Luganville, what in the world has happened to Houston's offense tonight? Haven't handled pressure up front, have not been able to separate and create plays versus man-to-man -man coverage, which this offense has been known for. You know, a, a morph and a blend of the air raid and the run and shoot, and usually they've been very successful creating plays versus man coverage. They'll go to the ground. Borgie has their only touchdown. And he'll get a couple of yards. Stormy, what you got? Well, I talked to wide receivers coach Peyton Party just about what's held this offense back largely since the second quarter. And he said, you know, D.C. really is doing everything that we thought that they would do on film. We just haven't been able to do our part. We haven't been able to execute. But he grabbed Brandon Silvers aside, put his hands on his shoulders, and said, remember what we did in Seattle. And they weren't able to come away with the win, but they did score two touchdowns in about a minute. So he said, we're not out of it until we're out of it. It's true, they had the ball on Seattle's side of the field, and this time they've got Deontay Burnett with no one near him. How did Deontay get that free? 85-yard touchdown. Okay, Patriot, Patriot, Patriot. Patriot, ball in the middle of the field. Okay, here we go. 85 we go. yards. We got Let's go. Deontay Burnett just sets up the D.C. defenders, gets them peeking into the backfield. Those defenders, Dewan Neal, 26, he's peeking. He thinks they're going to throw that flat route, right? And then Deontay Burnett runs right by him. Be hot if it turns to alert, alert. Going Scoot for just three. A bit, Burnett, scooting just a little bit. This would make it a one-score game. This is McDonald at quarterback. Stepping up. Shovels it ahead, but out of bounds. Yeah, it's a 12-point DC to, lead. Try to get Garrett a chance next time, but good throw. Good throw. And here we are. We're not out of it. Fresh off of Stormy's report. See Cole McDonald, he's going to pump to the flat, gets everybody jumping up and biting on it. Got caught peeking, D.C. Again, that time for, for Houston. They protected well, had a good call. And that's the explosive play that's been lacking really the last two weeks in this offense. They bring McDonald in off the bench. Silver's 110 yards passing all night, and McDonald gets 85 in one throw. In one throw, yeah. Now let's see if, if their defense can come to play. It's a 12-point game. It's still late in the third quarter. And remember... Houston last week, like Stormy said, was able to convert a fourth and 15 last week when they went for it, their version of an onside kick. And this ball fielded in return to the 24 by Ezzard. Here we go, here we go. Right, right, right. Can Houston keep their composure on defense on this possession? Hey, skins left hack, 27 power. I'm on ready. Hey, on the center. Oh, we're going to line up and get down to power football now. Hey, I'm, I'm reversing out. Reversing out. What do you mean by reversing yeah. out? That means they're going to run the ball to the left, 27, but Jordan Tom is going to turn right and reverse out, and wind around and hand the ball off to Abram Smith. Ready, ready. Thank you. And that's what he does. And Smith, look at the extra effort, gets him past the 30-yard line. He hasn't done much tonight, Lukes, but he's, his last two runs have been his most effective ones. They'll take they'll take six yards of carry right now. Yak. Yak. 26 Gucci. Yak. 26 Gucci. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 26 Gucci. So now it's power again, but now it's to the right with a tag on it. Here we go. 
Meaning if he gets a look, ready, ready. change things Check up here. Up. Following Wolf's block. Maybe gets a yard. It'll be third and short as Rivers and Johnson come in to tackle Smith. I don't know. Hey, we're going to the easy. Yeah, yeah, quarter, quarter. This has been tough. This has been the area that tonight DC has struggled yeah. with. Third and two or less. They have not been able to convert. They're going to let the quarter run out here, which is wise. Yeah, I like it. Well, we can do it out of 11. We can do it out of 11. We're at the end of the third quarter in Washington, DC. The only undefeated team in the league trying to stay that way with a 12 point cushion. Rated M for Mature. Look at our progressive game flow. Max Borgie got the scoring started, and Houston had the lead early. But since the second quarter started, it has been all D.C. On offense, Abram Smith pushing the pile. Santos Ramirez got the pick six. And then in the back of the end zone, Alex Ellis with his first touchdown as a defender. But the Roughnecks are back in it after Deontay Burnett was wide open for the longest play of the season in all of the XFL, an 85-yard touchdown. Tamu on offense gets back to work and finds Josh Hammond for a defender's first down. Flex left. Flex left. Flex left. Yak. 26. 26. Gucci. 26. Gucci. 26. Gucci. 26. Gucci. Here we go. Here we go. There's that power play again. Ready, ready. There's the yak. Second. That's the Y motion. Smith running hard as the game goes on. He gets better. Good patience there, and again, just like last week versus St. Louis, Abram Smith has a knack for sneaking through really small creases, secures the football, gets north and south, and this is where the style of play for D.C. with the clock rules in the XFL really play into their favor. By far his longest run of the night, a 29-yarder for the leading rusher in the XFL. Clock stopped due to a player being down for injury right now. Kerry Vincent. Part of that national championship team at LSU four years ago. Yep. There's that old adage, Taylor, you know, we, we, we've got to be able to run the ball when we have to, right? All right, you're figuring, okay, well, DC's got to run. I think it's more of we got to be able to run the ball when we want to. We're going to line up. We're going to say we're going to run it right there, and you're, you're not going to stop us. That's what DC has been able to do all year long. And Harry, I mean, Fred Kais, the offensive coordinator, just seems to have all the right answers right now. Well, I really commend them because they haven't hit a big one tonight before that last one. Yeah. But staying consistent, staying committed to the run, really paid off on that last run by Abram Smith. Raquel Armstead slipped as he was going down and maybe lost half a yard. The team leads the XFL in rushing yards, attempts, touchdowns, yard per carry, first downs. And they've rushed, outrushed all five of their opponents, including tonight. Ace, ace left, ace left, ace, ace left. Ace Zach, 71, yeah. squirrel, 71 squirrel, nine. 71, 71, squirrel 71, nine. 71, 71, 71. Squirrel, that's the, go, the term go. and the label for the out routes in this offense by the receivers. Ready, ready. Take him. So much time oh. for Tiamu and Lucky Jackson to the house. He was already Tamu's favorite target, but this is his biggest performance to date. The perfect call versus the ideal coverage. Two split high safeties. I mentioned the out routes. What does Lucky Jackson do? 
He's going to sell the out route, put his foot in the ground, get right up the middle of the field, down the seam during uh, against the void of the coverage. If they convert this two-pointer, this will make it a three-score game. Tamu gets rid of it quickly and finds Blair for two. Lucky Jackson, 136 yards receiving. His DC defenders are up 20. They're the only undefeated team in the XFL. The nation's capital is alive for football in the spring. I've got moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Listen. That's her second double move of the night. It was a stick pump too high. What's the key to winning double moves as a wide receiver? Uh, honestly, man, staying patient, trusting the route, and expecting contact once you make that move. Thanks, Lucky. Thank you. Well, it was a great move, too, and they caught him again in the perfect coverage. So here's your two high safeties there. We're going to go streak route here, out, and then this looks like it's going to be an out. As it turns, he goes right down the middle of the field, wide open against the void and just a really well-run route. Gets him to bite because he's peeking into the quarterback. And a good throw from Jordan Tom. A nice job, nice execution, as Harry mentioned. It's about sticking your foot and selling it with your head. Last time Cole McDonald threw the football, he threw the longest pass of the year in the XFL. And this time he slings it out to Travell Harris. Close to a first down. It'll be second and short. Donald trying to keep his team in it, down 20 with 12 minutes and change to go. Hey, change this, change this to uh, just regular Houston on the right side. You're good. Red, red, red. Red, red, red. Just red, red, red. You're good. Look at all these guys right here inside. Now, some may be coming, some may be dropping. Most are dropping. It's caught by Bird. Bird wrestles for yardage will be a yard sh short stormy I noticed that overs already hit yes Taylor they say that Vegas is always right right and before <laughs> the game I told you we had that slight line move and it was all over money that was coming in that ticked the total up from 42 to 43 so we are well clear of that now and DC it's hard to believe now up 20 that they were just a two-point favorite to start this one on the live line I've seen between 15 and a half and 16 and a half points that they're favored by within the last minute or so um, so if you think Houston can put up some points here this drive or in this quarter, they average 8.8 .8 points per fourth quarter this season. Maybe you're willing to take the plus points there? Who knows? Did it last week and come from behind fashion, and this is what McDonald does best. Whoa. It's inside the 40. Give me this. Give me this. Give me, uh, let's go. Watt blue check, Y streak. And if it's cover one, we're going to go X delay. Y streak, blue Y streak, blue Y streak. Okay, we can check to the left side. Let's see what they're playing. All right, here we go, here we go. I, I go X delay, X delay. Left to right, blue check. Here we go, seven seconds, seven seconds, seven seconds. McDonald across the middle, has another target at the goal line, and it's just short. Ben Putnam right, marked down me, at the one. This. I got it, I got it. Go, uh, regular, 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 strong left, strong left Broncos punch. Strong left Broncos punch. Really well-thrown football. Good pre-snap recognition by Cole McDonald there, and nice timing as well to anticipate the throw. This is just the second red zone possession for Houston tonight. Right in front of that beer snake. Stoned in the backfield, a loss of half a yard. As Lee is tackled by Bernard. Stormy, what's the over-under on the beer snake cups? 
I need an over-under on the cups. Well, usually, at least what I have researched in my in my intense research on the beer snake, gentlemen, is that at its peak, it's about 1,250 cups. Okay. Like, that's that's a lot of beer, guys. I'm just saying. And there's that's a, a lot. lot of slack on the bottom portion of that. I think if they straighten that out, they Oh, there's, a, there's the a mishap right now. Some cups are falling down at the bottom. Oh, no. You see that? Yeah, there is. There's a break in the beer snake, and Borgi scores. It's a... 14-point game. We'll see what Houston decides to do. Houston comes up with an answer. Cole McDonald providing a spark for this offense. And, and again, the threat of the quarterback run, he hands it off. And Max Borgie is so diminutive in stature, it's difficult to get a sense of where he is behind the line of scrimmage. Empty wing left. Uh, yeah, empty wing oh, left. Okay. And then let's go. Uh, Let's go egg or Z twirl. Z twirl. Out of black. Let's go widow. Widow. Red Tokyo. Widow. Red Tokyo. Widow. Get the three man front. Get the three man front. Get the uh, three ready man to gun it. front. Be ready to gun it. It's a two possession game no matter what here. 34 20 the score with 10 03 left. offense is finally woken up Luke's in this fourth quarter yeah and again they've gotten back to their bread and butter and that's explosive plays you see AJ Smith there trying to dial some things up in between series to give them a chance to get back in this game you know what they need to get back in this game they need a defensive stop and that and that's what's been hard to come by here long drives culminated with touchdowns they've got to come up with a way to get a stop hey. Reggie Barlow's team, 14 points clear, about to get the football back with just over 10 minutes to go. This team certainly plays to his personality, too. Described as a quiet, reserved, and confident man, his team always in control. He never get yeah, they, they follow his lead. He never gets caught up in the emotions of the game. Be fielded by Ezard inside the 10. And he can fly, gets past the 30 yard line. Again, XFL, week seven, Friday, Sea Dragons Renegades on FX at seven. Then on Saturday, it's a doubleheader. It starts on ESPN two at three with the Brahmas and the Vipers, then flip over to ESPN at six, the Defenders and the Guardians. And then on Sunday, it's the Battle Hawks and the Roughnecks at two on ESPN. Every game is streamed on ESPN Plus. Here we go, here we go. Hey, second set. Having a night. I would say. Ready, ready. Set, go. 90 yards over his average, but it's running time for Abram Smith. We'll work on that clock a bit. Hey, sugar, 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 sugar. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Mike, Mike, Mike. Now you got Derek King hey, in the game with Jordan Ta'amu. Both of them. Yep. Here we go, here we go. Think left to right, left to right. Ready, ready. Set, go. So many options. Look at the menu. Hammond gets down inside the 45-yard line. Hey, sugar, sugar, sugar. Let's go 11 personnel. This takes Philly special out. Hey, straight 11. Straight 11. Sam Will, Tonto 1. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Sam Will, Tonto 1. Don't press. Don't press. Trey Wright. Trey Wright. 26. Trey Wright. Gucci. 26, 26, 26 Gucci. Gucci. 26 Gucci. I'm on ready. Seeing that, that's their power play to the right. Ball should be going to Abram here go, Smith here, here out of the pistol. Let's go, let's go. Don't press it, JNA. Let's play inside. Ready, ready. Set, go. <laughs> Smith, the legs are always churning another first down. Sugar, sugar, sugar. I know power's the play. We're going to kick him out. This guy's a good football hey, player, sugar, man. Sugar, 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 he, he, he hasn't played a lot of running back, had a great senior season at Baylor. 
1,600 yards rushing, but played linebacker prior to that. He's just coming into his own. It's a good point about him playing defense for the Bears. Yep. He's got life in the fourth quarter, doesn't he? Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. Smith near the 30. Clock is a problem for Houston. 12, 12, 12. Yep. Credit this offensive line, too. Let's get to the line. Twins. So. Brought in two offensive linemen last week prior to the St. Louis game, and boy, they gelled quickly. Here we go. Ready, ready. Say go. Hey, 16 Gucci fire. 16 Gucci fire. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Say go. Tamu can't go anywhere. Now it's third down. Chauncey Rivers was ready. Only problem, though, for Houston here, Lukes, is they only have one timeout yeah. left. Remember? They had to use two early in the half. We talked about that first five minutes of the third quarter. It's going to be a bootleg. Fake run left, boot right. Shunks it to the end zone. Lucky Jackson incomplete. Nice job defending it by John Brandon. You're right, Taylor. John Brandon did an excellent job here late. And that might have been a touchdown for Lucky Jackson. Still able to get one hand on it. This would be the longest field goal that Matt McCrane has made this year. This is a 50-yard attempt. To give D.C. a 17-point lead right down the heart. Boom. D.C. is undefeated. Honest Abe loves it, too. Look at him. He's thrilled. It's 37-20. <laughs> Welcome to Stormy Heights, where the windows are all bloom. It is a beautiful time in the spring in our nation's capital. Weather's just been terrific the last few days. You know what also is beautiful? The bridge lit up on a Monday night. Undefeated DC and Audi Field creating the world's largest beer snake. The Astros stole this side, too. <laughs> Shots at the Houston baseball team. Look, look at this thing slithering up. Is that Captain Obvious? That is Captain Obvious. He was directing traffic earlier. Look at it. It's almost to the top. Yep. John Lee kicks it to the eight. Can Houston answer down 17? The team has given up the most points all season. But it is a two-possession game because you can go for three in the XFL. And look at what McDonald has done off the bench, Luke's here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and we didn't anticipate seeing Cole McDonald. There was no indication coming into the week. Uh, but clearly, you know, with them sputtering against Seattle a week ago and needing a spark here tonight after sputtering again on offense, he's bought that spark, at least put points on the board. Look at those live lines down at the bottom there. Stormy was talking about. Do you think the Roughnecks are going to make a comeback here? Down third, down 17, flags on the field. This guy is so good running the football. He's into D.C. territory, but we'll see if this comes back. Defender looked happy to be there. I don't have him breaking color, separation of color. Okay. Number number uh, 56, takedown. 56. Offense, okay. number 56. 10-yard penalty, first down. That's big with the clock. Such a factor. It's compounding the problem for Houston here tonight with penalties, negative yards. Clock always runs outside of two minutes in the second and fourth quarters. 102 yards of penalties tonight for this Houston offense. 
McDonald trying to keep the play alive, and he just runs out of bounds. Cut that guy while you and snap it across, okay? All right, we're good, we're good. Give me this, give me trips left, trips left, and uh, let's go low check swing, and let's go GTFO. Get the out of here. <laughs> The F open. Let's go. Just, just get open. Hey, right, check river one. Check river one. Check river one. Seven seconds. Four. River one. The other thing. Come back to it. Dump off. Uh, that's a dangerous bubble, but somehow Burnett breaks free. Okay, we good. Go, go. He's close to a first NASCAR. down. That's a pickup of 18. Okay. Give me trips left. Trips left. Blue uh, GTFO Z slant. Let's see it. Good job that time by Jay Smith, checking it, seeing what he had coverage-wise, checking like to the underneath GTFO. screen. Third and three, McDonald. Across his body, wide open inside the 30. How did he find Travell Harris? Okay, NASCAR, 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 NASCAR. Give me a red H streak, red H streak, Z smoke, red H streak, Z smoke. Let's go, let's go. Gotta snap the ball here, Houston. Let's go. McDonald. Incomplete. Justin Smith could not make the catch. But how about McDonald across his body on that last catch to Harris? Couple of no-nos right there. You're rolling away across from your body, throw late across the middle of the field. Very fortunate just not to have a red jersey in an area to, to interfere with that pass, but resourceful nonetheless for Cole McDonald. They, they got to start speeding things up in between plays here. Yeah, because the clock is always rolling. Yep. McDonald underneath throw is caught by Burnett. It'll be third down. Under three and a half left. Give me a uh, stack right. Give me Hawaii, Hawaii. Trips left up. Red Sea Pock out of stack. Just line up in it. Trips left up. Red Sea Pock. Scoot in, scoot in, Saunter. Scoot in, scoot in. Here we go. Run it. On the third and five, McDonald's going to step up. He'll get the first down. It'll be first and goal inside okay, the good, 10. Good, this is what we're going to do. Stay in what we're in. Give me trips left up, blue juke pump. Take care of the football. Trips left up, blue juke pump. Cole McDonald being very smart here, understanding where he's at in the field of play. You can't make mistakes. You can't take a sack. you got to get forward progress. Live to play the next down. You hear A.J. Smith saying, be careful with the football right here. McDonald. Take the hit and slide down at the three. Give me turbo, turbo, turbo. Trips right. There's 20 seconds left. Get this play off. Trips right, Ohio left. Trips right, Ohio left. Trips right, Ohio left. Ferrari, Ferrari. Trips right, Ohio left. Go. 14 seconds. He's counting down to the two-minute warning. Go, go, go. 205, McDonald gets it off and gets just short of the end zone with two minutes left. Francis Bernard prevented him from scoring. Wow, that's a killer. They needed to score on that play. Houston only has one timeout left. They're down 17. They needed looking to stay that way with two minutes left. Houston's Cole McDonald has come off the bench, though, and performed well in this fourth quarter. But the Roughnecks penalties have been a huge problem. 12 for over 100 yards. And I have to say, the Beer Snake got all the way to the top, and now they're disassembling yep. it responsibly. Conscientious Beer Snake dismantlers. Third and goal, McDonald trying to push the pile in, and yes, he gets across. And now it's an 11-point game. You at least need to get two here, Lugs, to make it a one-score yep. game. There's the the push. 
Just line up. Remember Philadelphia in the yep. Super Bowl, essentially revitalizing the quarterback sneak. That wasn't a bush push. That was a Garrett <laughs> Owens push. That's right. <laughs> They're right, going to go for three here. Yep. They only need two to make it a one-score game, but they want to make it an eight-point game now. Obviously, we'll go for it on the onside kick here in a minute, too. But first, from the 10, looking to make it 37-29, McDonald. Can he get out of there? Over the head of his intended target, Travell Harris. And it's an 11 point game. On for next. Coach. Now, here's Luke's what makes the XFL so much fun. And, they, and Houston converted this last week. Yeah. And. You, you heard A.J. Smith asking, hey, coach, what do you want to do here? Do we want to try and get this ball back on fourth and 15? Fourth and 15. Yep, here fourth we go. Here we go. Yep. Head in and go outside. So give me trips right, blue F wheel, hook and ladder. Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> the old school hook and ladder. We don't see that enough these days, no. do we? Not easy to execute, though. Boise State watching? Yeah, right? Well, that was the Statue of Liberty, wasn't it? Well, they had both they had in that both. game. You're right, they did X, have both. The X, hook, hook over at about 10 yards, oh, right at about 12 yards. Get to 12. Get to 12. Where do you want the ball spotted from the hashes? Which, which hash? Middle, middle of the field. Middle of the field. <laughs> Donald has come off the bench. Be fascinated to see what Coach Phillips does against St. Louis on Sunday with his quarterback situation with Silver's ineffective tonight. That's a big one in Houston. Find the hole X, H time it up. Greg Williams does not know that this hook and ladder is coming. Get our hand around quick if it's zero. McDonald gets rid of it. Here comes the flip. But it, he's going to be bottled up short. Smith caught it. Tossed it to Bird, but Bird had nowhere to go. And it's DC's football. Woo! That was dicey, too, on the pitch back. Oh. So many things have to go right on, on the hook and lateral. I mean, it's just the timing of it, the alignment and position of defenders. One forty-eight to go. Houston can't do anything about ready, it because they only have one timeout left. Ready, ready. Stay, go. Easy, easy. Hey, 20. Two, 22, 22 balls. Here we go, here we go. Ready, ready. Stay, go. Smith inside the 30. Reggie Barlow's team will be two games better than anyone else in the league and has a big cushion in their division. And they've got Orlando coming up, who struggled mightily so far this season. Yeah, big time. And, and what they've got to do now is continue to focus on themselves, not focus on what somebody else's record is or what everybody's expecting them to do. But the bottom line is, you look at that mistake column, three penalties tonight for D.C., 12 for Houston. D.C. just doesn't beat themselves. Points right, 23. Hey, down. Here we go. Here we go. Ready, ready. Set, go. Smith still in there, and he's down inside the 25-yard line. Coming up Thursday, it's the hey, latest seven, episode of the XFL docuseries Player 54, an all-excess look at the league and its players you can't get anywhere else. It's Player 54, Episode 5. It's Thursday at 3.30 p.m. right here on ESPN2.
three pick sixes for this D.C. defense. They're scoring points, playing well in the kicking game. 50-yard field goal here tonight. And they don't make mistakes or penalize themselves. Smith wants more yardage. He gets over 90 on the night. Hey, hold on, hold on. 63 points is the second highest scoring game we've had in the XFL this year. As Stormy told you to take it. Yeah, she was on it early. File that in your Stormy sports book. That's right. Sometimes, guys, sometimes <laughs> this noggin can work, believe it or not. Yeah. What a week <laughs> for Stormy Bonatoni. The San Diego State Aztecs are in the final four. She crushes the over tonight. Victory formation, and D.C. goes to 6-0. and Houston still in terrific shape. Past the midway mark of the season, they fall to 4-2. and two. But the last two weeks have been a struggle for the Roughnecks. Jordan Tamu was terrific tonight, Luke's throwing the football. Well, I think that's where he's really started to separate himself. He's comfortable within the offense. He knows what everybody's expecting out of this offense, right? Well, they're only going to run it, and then they're going to do quarterback run. And when his time, his moment came to make plays in the passing game, because that's what the defense dictated, he delivered, and he delivered, I think, in style. And now, all of a sudden, you start to look at D.C. a little bit differently when you have to defend him. Harry, let's hear from him. Jordan, 19 for 31, 245 yards, two touchdowns. You guys were able to do it throughout the air. Yeah. How do you feel about your wide receivers and your offensive coordinator tonight? Um, you know, I love our offense. You know, I'm, I was being patient. You know, I knew, you know, the touchdowns were going to come. I knew the yards were going to come. Stayed patient, stayed within the system, and uh, continue to play. Our offense is amazing. Love our O-line, our running back, receivers, everyone in that room. Audie Field has been a staple for the XFL. The yeah. fans tonight, Monday Night Football, yeah. showed up and showed out. What do you want to say to the D.C. area? D.C. area, keep coming and support. We can't do this without you. Uh, the, mo the noise was amazing. The beer snake was amazing. Just everything about it. Love D.C. Love y'all. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you. We we'll toss was. it over to Stormy with Lucky Jackson. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Harry. And, and Coach Reggie Barlow told us in the preseason, you are a guy who prepares the right way. The preparation paid off tonight. How did you get it done? Uh, like you said, I put a lot of work in throughout the week with our team uh, and our receivers and quarterbacks. And when you prepare through the week, uh, it makes the game a lot slower and a lot easier. So uh, when you see us execute, that's just preparation. This Houston defense was allowing the fewest points per game in the league to this point. What allowed you guys to continue to move the football so effectively tonight? Uh, with our run game being so strong, uh, we knew that the receivers were gonna uh, have a chance to come out and make a play. And when the ball was thrown our way, that's what we did. Coaches talked about this being kind of a measuring stick game between two of the top teams in the league. How did you guys create that much more separation? And what does that mean for your group to be 6-0? and Honestly, man, it goes back to preparation. Like I said, when you prepare the right way, uh, the game comes smooth. You, you come out here and execute. Uh, being 6-0 and is everything that we imagined at the beginning of the season, but we're not done yet. We know we still got a lot of, a lot of season to go, and we look forward to keep going. Absolutely. Enjoy this. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Taylor? Big night for the D.C. defenders. They stay undefeated at 6-0. Well, one thing that I've noticed watching John Schifrin, Tom Luganville, Stormy <laughs> Harry, Aaron Owens, and their terrific team is that the XFL is here to stay. And I wonder going into the year, Lugs, if a team would show any separation through the first maybe five or six weeks, right. and the answer is yes. D.C. is the cream of the crop. Yeah, they are right now, and, and they, they just – they do all of the little things well. They're well coached. They've got a head coach with a very even keel personality. When the things are going well, he doesn't get too high. When things aren't going well, he doesn't get low. And this team models their personality after his. And so I think with their style of offense, with the unique rules in the XFL, with the running clock, if you can effectively run the football and you can minimize possessions for the other team. Oh, and by the way, the other team's making more mistakes than you are each and every week. No wonder D.C.'s 6-0. Yeah, and the poise that you're talking about yep. is a huge factor. Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, raved about his head coach, Reggie Barlow, with us a few days ago. And the overall aura around this D.C. team. You see the standings. They have a two-game lead over St. Louis and Seattle in the north. Houston's still in good shape, though, in the south.
They've got Arlington one game back with four games remaining in the regular season. Remember, D.C. plays Orlando coming up this weekend. I know you'll be there to see that. That's just one of the four games on the slate in Week 7. Yeah, and D.C., let me tell you something. Be careful because Orlando is like a snake backed into the corner now. They've got nothing to lose, everything to gain. Focus on who you are. And how about Arlington? Arlington, with the loss to San Antonio, they needed this Houston loss, and they got it. Give them a little bit of energy going into next week, and then a few weeks from now, we're going to have Arlington coming into this building to take on D.C. I love the XFL. It's always great being good, with you, my good friend. Good time, right? All the best in the world to this terrific crew as we move, we move forward in Week 7. So we're telling you about Week 7. And again, it's Friday. You have Seattle and the Arlington Renegades. Then Saturday, you've got a doubleheader starting on ESPN2, then finishing up on ESPN, then also that Sunday game as well with St. Louis and Houston. Houston needs to get things turned around in that game on Sunday. Yeah, they really do. they got to get back back on track on offense, and, and really you got to find a way to replace the production and the speed and the big play explosiveness that you lost with John Trey Kirk. It's a big night tonight for Jordan Tamu. Abram Smith wasn't the story in the first half, but he churned out those yards in the backfield. How about this guy, Lucky yeah. Jackson, just sensational. Well, and how about how about what the XFL is all about? Th these are fans, right? Fans are coming down, getting on the field. They love this team here. I mean, the venue, the fans that have showed out each and every week. We talk and we have fun with the beer snake, but this is a loud, raucous environment. This is not an easy place to play. you got a soccer stadium here, so they're right on top of you. It's a great home field advantage for D.C. You know what this was? This was fun is yes. what it was. Our final score, D.C. 37, Houston 26. Coming up next is the Powerade Jam Fest here on ESPN2. What a privilege to be here at Audi Field tonight. The D.C. Defenders are still the only undefeated team in the XFL. Welcome to Houston for the first time in the McDonald's.